behind. Uh, but I'm here today, so I know last time we talked a little bit about the sinuses. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about one of the things that we can do for sinuses. Uh, there is actually a procedure that can be done here in our office. It's called balloon sinuplasty. You know, we talked a little bit about all the conservative things that can be done for sinuses. You can do a sinus rinse. You can do nasal steroid sprays like Flonase or Nasacort. You can do sinus irrigations. Uh, there are actually lots of options that people have to have tried and failed prior to getting to this point. So what we're doing now is we're looking at people who have just been on so many antibiotics, they've tried all these nasal sprays, they've done all these things over the years, and they're just not getting any better. They're living with chronic daily facial pain, facial pressure, uh, or recurring sinus infections, or just chronic congestion, they're not getting any better. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about something that we can do here in the office. Um, technology has come a really long way here in the past number of years. Uh, when I was a resident, uh, when I was just out of medical school learning about ENT, um, all the people with recurring sinus infections came to the operating room. They all had what we call functional endoscopic sinus surgery. That means in the operating room, uh, while you're asleep, they essentially put a breathing tube in. You're completely out for it. You don't feel anything. You don't remember anything. While you're asleep, we do surgery through the inside of the nose with a camera. Um, during that surgery, we actually go to the drainage pathways for the sinuses, uh, the sinuses between the eyes, and we actually open those up surgically. So we cut the tissue away in order to allow the sinuses to drain properly, allow air to get in, allow mucus to get out. Um, so again, that surgery is called functional endoscopic sinus surgery. That means we want to preserve the function of the nose. Like we talked about a couple days ago, the nose serves a function. Its job is to humidify the air that we breathe, filter the air that we breathe, create mucus, trap the gunk inside the air. So doing that surgery, we're trying to preserve the function of the nose. Now that being said, uh, that doesn't always necessarily happen. Uh, when you're cutting that tissue away, you're opening things up a lot larger than the natural drainage pathway for the sinus, which is actually very, very tiny. As technology and as our medical knowledge has progressed here over the years, uh, we've kind of actually come to find out sometimes doing a little bit less is actually better for the patient. Um, and not to say that it's less, but you're not as invasive as what we used to be doing. We're not always having to cut open the sinuses in order to drain out infection and to alleviate all your problems. So there's actually a procedure that we can do in the office now. It's called balloon sinuplasty. A lot of people have heard of people having angioplasty for the heart. The premise there is that a tiny little balloon goes into the blood vessel that's narrow in the heart. And that balloon inflates and opens that blood vessel to allow blood to flow through. So there's actually something in the office that we can do. It's called balloon sinuplasty. Same premise. We're using a very, very small balloon. Uh, this isn't a party balloon. It's not like a latex balloon that you would typically think of. This is a very, very tiny, rigid plastic balloon. And when you inflate it, it gets very firm. Uh, and what it does essentially is it opens the natural drainage pathways for the sinuses to allow them to function properly. And we're doing that without having to necessarily remove tissue. We're not having to cut anything away. Um, and so we're really preserving the natural function of the sinuses. Um, so I've actually got a little demonstration here for you. I've got the actual device that we use for this procedure. So I'm gonna show that to you here in a minute. Um, uh, again, remember, this is for people who are kind of at their wits end. They've had multiple sinus infections. They've got chronic facial pain, chronic facial pressure. Um, these are people who have tried everything. Now, if we see somebody who comes into our office, uh, they're, they've got, you know, a sinus infection a year. They've got some allergies. You know, most of the time we can treat those people pretty conservatively. We can do medications, we can do nasal sprays, we can do allergy pills. A lot of times that takes care of the problem. Uh, I see you got a couple of people watching. Uh, hello, Barbara. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Chelsea. Um, so a lot of people, most people can be treated medically for their sinus issues. 
Uh, these are the people who are just suffering. This is causing chronic issues for them. They are just miserable. And so at this point, people are ready to try just about everything. Now, instead of doing this procedure in their operating room, we've kind of actually taken a step back and found that a vast majority of the patients that we are seeing for this issue can be managed a little more conservatively and they can be managed here in our office. All right, so what is balloon sinuplasty? This is a procedure where we are actually remodeling the sinus passages. The sinuses, the drainage pathways are very, very thin layers of bone. And so that's covered in mucosa. So if we can just open that just a little, oh geez. I apologize, my, uh, my camera just went wonky. Let me see if I can fix it. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, it's back. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Where was I? Okay, so we want to create a natural opening drainage pathway for the sinus. And to do that, it's very simple. All we need is a tiny little opening within the sinuses. So typically these people have very, very narrow drainage pathways. We've already gotten a CAT scan. We can see that on the scan. We'll review that with you when we see you. I apologize, I keep touching my face. I washed my hands prior to this video. I will try to stop touching my face. Okay, um, balloon sinuplasty. Here in the office, the patient will come in. Uh, while they're here in the office, uh, we will actually get them numb. So local anesthesia, that is topical medication that numbs the nasal passages, numb the sinuses. Most people have had dental procedures where you numb the inside of the mouth uh, using Novocaine or Lidocaine. So most people know what that feels like. You can't feel anything during those procedures. Um, typically for this procedure, we will give people a little tiny little bit of Xanax beforehand. Uh, what that does is just mellows people out so they don't care so much about what we're doing. Um, here in the office, we also have, believe it or not, laughing gas, nitrous oxide, and that's controlled by the patient. So you've got a little, it looks like a little inhaler or nebulizer. They can puff on this. It just mellows them out, makes it so they really don't care that much about what's going on. As soon as you stop using it, that medication wears off. So it's a nice patient controlled way of mellowing things out so that while we're working on the nose, you just don't care that much. So the patient is able to control that by breathing onto the nitrous oxide. Okay, while they're doing that, we're gonna put some spray inside the nose that numbs the nose. We're gonna put some cotton inside the nose that numbs the inside. We're gonna put some gel inside the nose that numbs the sinuses even further. So by the time we actually get to the actual procedure, the inside of the nose is really, really numb. Now, most people, if you've ever had anything done under local anesthesia, you can feel some pressure, you can feel some pushing, but you're not gonna feel anything sharp, you're not gonna feel anything that you would consider uh, painful. All right, now, we're using a tiny endoscope. This is a camera about this long. We can look inside the nose. We've got a big screen TV up on the wall so we can see the inside of the nose and the nasal passages on that uh, TV while we're working. All right, I'm gonna show you the device that we use. This is the balloon device. I'm gonna cover the name brand uh, so that I don't get sued. But this is the device that we use for this procedure. Um, as you can see, it's got a very uh, kind of a soft, flexible tip. And this can be controlled by the surgeon at the time of the procedure. There's nothing sharp, we're not cutting anything, we're not removing anything. What we have here, there's a tiny little guide wire. I control that using my thumb. So using my thumb, that little guide wire slides out and then it's actually got a little spinning device on there. And so what will happen is when I spin it, it turns the tip of that guide wire just ever so slightly and we can actually kind of steer the device into the sinus. Um, now here's the actual, the coolest part. Uh, with this device, believe it or not, on the very tip of this guide wire, there's a tiny little microchip. Um, that microchip has what we call stereotactic navigation uh, capacity. I've got a device in our office. I take your patient, the patient's CAT scan, I load it into the computer system, and up on the screen, on the monitor, it's gonna show me 
the patient's CAT scan. It's going to show it to me in three or four different views. It's going to show it to me face on, from the side, and top down. Sorry for the, for the glare. Um, and what it's going to do, it's going to track the tip of this device. And on the CAT scan, it's going to show me in real time where the tip, ah, oh, dang it, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to revamp this uh, device here. <laughs> okay, we're back. Oh, hi, Melissa. One of my fellow ENT colleagues, uh, Melissa, is watching right now. Melissa was one of the uh, my fellow residents. She was two years ahead of me in training. Melissa taught me everything I know. Hi, Melissa. Uh, uh, Melissa's a fantastic surgeon. Uh, currently working on a head and neck fellowship. Hi, Melissa. Anyhow, uh, back to this. I hope this doesn't happen again. All right, so this, dang it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I might have to just go to holding this thing. If my, uh, if this happens one more time, I promise I will just hold it, okay? All right. All right, so on the scan, it's going to show me exactly where the tip of the guide wire is. So it is going to confirm that this little tip is actually in the sinus passageway. And remember, I've been able to steer it through using the little spin device. So once I'm in the sinus, I know. The older version of this actually has a little light on it. So we had to depend on actually seeing the light shine through the sinuses. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? Um, now, though, we've got far advanced technology. This device is actually in my office. We used to only have these in the operating room. All right, once I've got the guide wire in place, now there's another, this purple lever. What happens is I'm gonna slide the balloon over the guide wire. All right, now the balloon is actually in the drainage pathway for the sinus. So the guide wire can come back. I know for sure that the balloon is in that drainage pathway and I wish I had the inflation device, but what's gonna happen is this balloon is gonna inflate. Uh, again, it's only gonna inflate about four or five millimeters. And that is gonna be enough to actually dilate and break the tiny little bones of the drainage pathway and allow that sinus passage to drain properly. Once the balloon has been inflated, I deflate it, comes back, there's nothing that's left inside of the patient's sinuses. This comes out, we've essentially dilated that natural drainage pathway for the sinus, we've remodeled the sinus, and now you've got a sinus that can actually function properly, and we really didn't have to cut anything, we didn't have to remove anything. Um, every once in a while, we have to remove a little bit of tissue in order to get uh, uh, access to the sinuses, but for the most part, we don't have to do that. Now, Unfortunately, as of right now, because of what's going on, we have put on hold all of our elective procedures. This is an elective procedure. Uh, nobody needs a balloon sinuplasty emergently. Um, because we are working inside the nose, because we're working in an area where uh, the viral particles are potentially the highest, we've put all these on hold. So I'm currently not doing these in the office right now. Um, just so uh, I see Mia is watching. Mia is an infectious disease doctor. Don't worry, I'm not doing these right now in the office. I hope as soon as all this is over, we can get back to it. Um, I have had significant improvement in my patient's quality of life after doing this. People say that their facial pain, their facial pressure goes away. Um, they have significant improvement in their sinus infections. It's not to say you can't ever get another sinus infection, but you're gonna be significantly less likely to and if you do, it's not gonna be as severe. You know, the patients that I'm doing this on, they've had four, five, six sinus infections a year. Those infections might last up to two weeks each. If you consider that, that's 12 weeks out of the year. That's like three months of their life that they're suffering from their sinus issues. So we've really had a significant improvement in quality of life for our patients doing this. Every once in a while, somebody continues to have problems and we actually do end up doing the procedure in the operating room um, where we have to actually surgically open the passageways. That's something that we still do, but significantly less uh, commonly nowadays. 
another, all right, sorry. Last time, I'll hold it. I'm done giving the uh, demonstration, so I'm just gonna hold on to it. You can kind of see my fish there too. So again, uh, we've really significantly cut back on the number of patients that we're doing in the operating room. A lot of these are being done in the office. Uh, once we're done, you stop puffing on the nitrous, you get up out of your chair and um, you go home. Uh, we do ask that you have a driver here present with you just because some people feel like they've got some congestion pressure. You can just feel a little off. And especially if we have you do the Xanax beforehand, we don't want you driving home. So um, oftentimes there are a couple of other procedures that can be done at the same time with the balloon sinuplasty. Uh, we can shrink down the tissue on the inside of the nose so you can breathe better. If your septum has a significant deviation to it, oftentimes we can correct that at the same time. Please remember, not everybody is a candidate for this procedure, but um, like I said, this is kind of being a little more conservative compared to what we used to do in the operating room. So uh, we've had great success with it. Uh, most insurances will cover it. We always try and work with you on your insurance so we can look at that. Uh, we don't want any surprises, so uh, we'll usually be able to give you an estimate beforehand. Um, again, this is not for everybody, but uh, for a significant number of patients with chronic sinus issues, um, this is a, a fantastic way to go uh, when we cannot fix the problems using just some nasal sprays and some antihistamines. So again, oftentimes it's in conjunction with managing your allergies. Uh, if we don't get allergies under control, then oftentimes uh, people are still gonna have that chronic congestion and drainage. So um, doing this can oftentimes improve upon that so that when your allergies do flare up, the symptoms aren't as severe. Uh, anyhow, uh, if you have any questions about this, again, it's called balloon sinuplasty. Uh, please uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you have any ideas on future topics you'd like me to address, please let me know. Um, I've done my one week here in the office. Like I've told you before, uh, right now, because we're only seeing urgent patients, we're only seeing emergent patients. Uh, right now, we're only doing one doctor in the office at a time. So I was here this week. My partner, Dr. Berry, will be here next week. And my partner, Dr. Shapiro, will be here the week after that. And unfortunately, at this time, we don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, we hope, hope that things are going to get better sooner. Uh, for right now, stay home, stay healthy, wash your hands. Uh, we really want to reduce the spread of this virus and... Uh, keep any transmission at a minimum. So again, unfortunately right now, I'm only seeing urgent patients in the office. We are, however, offering telemedicine visits. Um, I had a couple people today I did telemedicine consultations with. I'd never met them before, but we talked on the phone. Uh, and actually both of them were for sinus issues. I was able to give them a lot of advice that I would have given them here in the office. Um, you know, obviously I can't look up their nose. I can't see if they've got polyps. But uh, as we were taught in medical school, a significant portion of your diagnosis is going to come from a patient's history. So we can make great strides just from talking face to face. So um, if, if that's something you think you'd be interested in or you feel like you need, please give us a call uh, at our office. Um, we're adult and pediatric ENT here in Kalamazoo. Um, you know, if, if you feel it can wait, if it's non-urgent, We'll be happy to see you back when things have normalized here. Hopefully that will be sooner than later. So um, guys, it was great talking to you. Oh, we've got a couple uh, suggestions here. Please do a talk about gross things you've seen in people's ears or a medical mysteries ENT edition. Uh, I could definitely tell you about some gross things that I've taken out. Uh, we've taken some things out of people's ears, out of people's noses, and actually right out of people's scalps. So uh, that's something that we could look at doing here in the near, near future. Um, I'm going to be at home for the next two weeks. It's going to be really difficult for me. Um, I love working. I love staying busy. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to find lots of things to do around the house. Um, I'm sure there's lots of repairs to be done, things I can do, time spent with my children. So anyhow, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. 
Please let me know if there's anything else that, uh, that we can do for you. Please let me know if there's anything else, any questions I can answer for you. Um, I've got a little extra time on my hands. So uh, love you guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.